Hello everyone, it's a real pleasure to join you today at the conference. I hope you've enjoyed all the sessions so far. Um, as you can probably tell, my session is coming to you from my garden and that is quite appropriate given that my session is all about uh, nature-based learning programmes for children with SEN. My title then was A Bold New Experiment on a Farm in South North Ants. Can insights from applied educational neuroscience be used to shape the future of children at risk of exclusion? So I'm a former assistant head from mainstream secondary sector, a former SENCO and DSL. I have worked in secondary schools for over 15 years as a teacher of psychology, RE, sociology and PSHE, and then taken on whole school leadership of PSHE, citizenship, children who are looked after and therapeutic wellbeing provision. I have a special interest in serving the most disadvantaged students taking a curious and research-informed approach to alternative provision and exclusions. To this end, I recently set up a nature-based learning program in a village called Pottersbury in South Northamptonshire. I run it as a social enterprise. I work one-to-one -one with students at risk of permanent exclusion, delivering the nature-based learning programs on this farm to try and build a sense of their brain-body connection. I believe the knowledge about the brain holds the key for our children and young people and us indeed as adults to build our, our emotional regulation skills and to be able to live healthy, fulfilled, long-term lives. It's a very small project and attempt at the moment to disrupt the chronic inequalities that exist currently in our education system that are affecting the life chances of our most vulnerable children and young people. As we are building the brain-body connection on the farm, we're using neurosensory st strategies originated from, originating from applied educational neuroscience. Now this is a new and emerging term. Um, I've borrowed it from a lovely lady in America called Dr. Laurie de Soutels, who I've connected with on LinkedIn. Her work is fantastic and she is one of the few people who, as well as being a professor and an academic working in, at Butler University, she's also set up a qualification for educators in America who want to learn the neuroscience and apply it to the classroom. In addition, she's done a very rare thing though and also works in a K1 or K2 class in America, which is our primary phase basically applying all of her knowledge and all of her research. So the aim for my project, for my programme, is to work with schools in true collaboration, with schools and also with parent and carers, using the strategies to reduce exclusions, to promote equality for children with SEM, especially unidentified SEMH or social, emotional, mental health needs. Therefore, we're working with students one day a week to apply these techniques to enhance their emotional regulation skills and promote their well-being. On my slides I've put a couple of quotes and a couple of pictures for you to have a look at and one of the key quotes I want to talk about is Stuart Shanker's quote that we cannot separate the well-being of children from that of the critical adults in their lives. And really I guess what I'm sharing today and um, the work that I do is really me sharing one story about one child. A child who was born into high levels of neglect and trauma and abuse, who had many, many ACEs, too many to talk about, ACEs being adverse childhood experiences. If you haven't had a chance to see the Resilience documentary or to learn more about ACEs, it's a very interesting debate, it's very controversial, I'm not going to go into it today, but it's definitely worth a look for your practice. So this child was adopted by myself in 2014 and my husband. And for so many people, when they talk about adoption, it's almost like it's the end of the story, that it's come at the end of a troubled time. But for us, it was really just the beginning. It was the beginning of an awful lot of heartache, child to parent violence, cycles of violence and aggression at school, leading to repeated school exclusions. By the age of nine, he'd been to four primary settings, two mainstream, two SEN. And effectively, exclusion from SEN was phrased as can no longer meet need here. So 
as I took on training, as much training as I could, I attended national conferences for adoptive parents, I learned from attachment psychologists, some amazing strategies. All of these, tra these conferences and this training taught me solutions to help rewire his brain. At the same time as I was learning about the brain and neuroscience, I was learning about the adolescent brain. I was reading around the psychology A-level curriculum I was teaching. I was discovering from cognitive neuroscientists such as Sarah Jane Blakemore in her book Inventing Ourselves that all of the critical adults in the lives of children and young people are brain architects. We are inputting all the time to their lives and to their brains. We are helping create a structure in their brain for good or not so good. And Karen, Dr. Karen Treisman has a great quote here that is on the slides, which is every interaction we have with a child or young person is an intervention. So every interaction we have with a child or young person can be used for positive, can be a powerful intervention. At the same time as I was learning about all this stuff about the brain, I was learning about mindfulness, again, as part of the psychology curriculum, and applying this in the classroom as well as at home. I was a teacher researcher in 2013, working with a team of researchers from Portsmouth University, looking at mindset and how we use mindset in educational contexts to transfer, transform underachievement. What I learned about all these different strategies, techniques, is nothing works on its own. I guess we all know that as practitioners, nothing is the silver bullet or the silver bullet. So I began to put together a toolkit at home as well as professionally. I came up with strategies that could be used 